Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 update, March 30th, 2020. All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All of our videos can be found on roomofo.com slash blog. Current trajectories are as follows. The United States is still growing exponentially. You can see here, if we zoom in on Canada, we are still growing day by day. Reported cases per million. You can see Canada's flattened out. It is now really hovering around where Germany and Italy are. The percentage of deaths are as follows. The high is Italy at 11.39%. The low is Germany at 0.96%. Canada is 1.19%. If we overlay the number of deaths, and the top number here is the most recent day, and it goes down, you can see Italy is still 8 or 900 deaths a day. So is Spain's around that mark as well. Germany is over 100 now. France has expanded over 400. The United Kingdom is leveled, usually around 200. The United States has increased to over 500. And Canada is still really just in the double digits uh, 21 though today. I'm going to talk about the reproductive number now. Again, remember it's the number of cases on average an infected person will cause during their infectious period in a susceptible population. A reproductive number greater than one means the disease is expanding, it's growing faster and faster each day. A reproductive number less than one also means disease is expanding, but it's growing slower and slower every day. A reproductive number of zero means there's no new cases. How do you calculate RT? Well, let's take an example for Canada. Number of new cases over number of existing cases from March 26th to March 30th, that's a four day period. There are the number of cases. We subtract them, 534 over 634. So our reproductive number is 0.84 over a four day period, okay? Now remember, even though the reproductive number is less than one, the number of cases is still growing, but the rate of growth is slowing down over a four day period. So if we look at the reproductive numbers over a four day period, you will see that all the countries are less than one over four days. Canada is the lowest at day 18. If you look at the reproductive number of the countries over a seven day period, okay, that means the virus just has more time to spread over seven days. You're gonna get more cases, so you're gonna have higher reproductive numbers. It's just simple math. The reproductive number for Canada in this period is about two to three. If you go over 14 days, it's gonna be even bigger than that. Okay? The only country whose reproductive number has crossed one, when you look at it over a seven day period, is Italy. Canada has the lowest reproductive number, however, at day 18. So South Korea is a country that's located south of North Korea. Surprise, surprise. It is about 51 million people. The capital city is Seoul. Seoul has about 27 million people in the metropolitan area and about 9 or 10 million people in the city proper. Daegu was the hardest hit area in South Korea, which is down here. Now, if we look at the daily number of new cases per day in South Korea, You'll see they started around February 19th. They increased to the end of February, early March, and got to about eight or 900 maximum per day, and then fell off to the point now where they're getting around 80 to 100 cases a day. But remember, this is a population of 51 million people. Now compare that to Italy. Italy started a few days after South Korea. Okay, They are now at five to 6,000 a day. Remember, Korea is at about 80. They're at five to 6,000. The population of Italy is not that much bigger than South Korea. It's incredible the difference uh, between the two countries. Let's look at Canada, okay? Canada, we started almost three weeks after South Korea, okay? And we're now at about 750 to 800 a day. So we're at that point where South Korea was. Now I'm gonna overlay the Canadian cases and the South Korean cases. So if we look at Canada, that's roughly where we are now. And if we overlay South Korea on the, roughly the same time period, there they are. So the alarming thing here is Canada continues to grow, whereas South Korea has started to taper off by this point in time. So over the next week or two, it is a critical, critical time in Canada to see what we can do to slow this thing down. So why did South Korea do so well? How did they do it? Okay, IT. Well, they used a lot of information technology to track people, but they also flipped that around and they tested and isolated people. So what lessons can we learn from South Korea? Well, they had certain principles. They're very open, they're transparent, and they're very prepared. They are prepared from the moment this virus was in China. They realized testing was central. It was central to early detection, and minimizing further spread, and to isolate those with the virus. And finally, they were fortunate. 
because there's a group in South Korea called the Shin Chonji, and this is a religious sect in South Korea, and the virus spread very rapidly through this group, but they're able to quarantine this group very early on, and some of the leaders uh, in South Korea called this a divine intervention, because if they weren't able to do this, they would have been out of control like in many other countries. So again, Canada, what do we need to do? You need to write to your Prime Minister. You need to write to your Premier. You need to write to your Member of Provincial Parliament and your Member of Parliament. You need to tell them it's of utmost urgency that we expand testing and isolation. I know there's not enough testing right now, folks, but we need to get more. That's why we're writing. So another thing they did in South Korea is everybody wears masks. And they realize the greatest benefit, it really isn't to the healthy, it's to prevent the sick people from spreading the virus. It, it collects droplets from the mouth of the nose. It prevents them from going onto surfaces or directly onto other individuals. Now, there's not good data to say that we should all wear masks and we'll absolutely reduce things, but it seems to make good common sense to me. All right, let's look at the new cases per day, see where we are. There's Italy, so they've leveled off. Spain, Germany, France, United Kingdom, the poor United States, and Canada in red. If we look at the number of new cases per day in Canada, today we had our highest ever at 1168, so it's really, really important we rein this in, folks. If we look at the cases per thousand hospital beds, we're still in second place, firmly between Spain and Italy. And these are the graphs from John Byrne Murdoch at the Financial Times. And you'll see that the United States and Turkey are still on the street, steepest trajectory. Uh, Canada has fallen off the United Kingdom a little bit today. Um, and hopefully we can get turn the corner and start following South Korea. If we look at the coronavirus deaths, uh, you can see that the United Kingdom is still tracking Italy and the U.S. Uh, has got the uh, steepest rate of trajectory at this point in time. And these are the sub-national regions and you'll see areas such as New York and Michigan and New Jersey, Los Angeles are all uh, growing very, very rapidly. California is uh, steep in its curve as well. And again, this lack of cohesive measures, getting this thing controlled early on is now uh, taking its toll in the United States. And this is a graph uh, from our colleague, a physician in Quebec, who's put this together for Canadians. Uh, and I just wanna highlight a couple of things here to just show the trajectories of Ontario and Alberta is roughly about the same. Um, British Columbia uh, was uh, steepening, they've started to flatten off, and Quebec is certainly uh, in the most trouble of anywhere in Canada. So remember folks, hold the line. We need to hold the line to get this thing under control, okay? Again, another shout out, Collins Clothiers, selling hoodies and t-shirts to support small businesses in Canada. Go to collinsclothiers.com and look under the link Canada Strong to get yours. Remember, do your part, flatten the curve, stay home, stay safe, and most importantly, save lives.